Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Kenny's Medieval History class. I am excited because today we're going to talk about the Vikings. Please hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel out and let's uh, get started. So I'm a little disappointed that we aren't um, all here together because normally I start uh, our Vikings unit with us listening to um, a hair metal uh song uh, by a guy named Ingve Malmsteen and essentially imagine the craziest craziest rock with um the guy with the craziest tightest pants and super long hair and the kids usually get a kick out of it I'll have to post a link uh below so you can check out Ingve Malmsteen's I am a Viking anyways who were these Vikings uh so the Vikings they are going to be raiders from Scandinavia so that's present-day countries Norway Sweden Denmark Finland although not so many um, and, you know, it's one of those things that through time, uh, words change. So basically, a Viking was going on the raids, but the people getting attacked by them uh, just knew them as the Vikings. So really, a Viking was anyone from that area who went a Viking, which means going on a raid when it was um, summertime to go get some loot um, the Vikings went by other names. You might know them, hear them as the Norse or the Northmen or the Norsemen. So that's just uh, something for you to realize if you hear in Viking, Norse, Northmen, Norsemen, it's all referring to the same people, which would be the people from this region going a Viking. All right, let's go. And so when was this uh, Viking age? It's, it's about 750. So uh, a little bit before Charlemagne. And typically we end the Viking Age when we have uh, William the Conqueror conquering England in 1066. Um, and really because William the Conqueror, a Norman, is um, really a descendant of the Vikings. Um, now Viking attacks will go after that and uh, we'll get into a little bit of that later on. So here's just showing some of the travels of the Vikings. And this is pretty incredible. Uh, later on, we're going to see what their boats look like, but they're in small ships. And we see them going all through, you know, the British Isles. We see them getting all the way to Constantinople. <laughs> we see them getting to the Caspian Sea. This is Russia over here, folks. We have, you know, along the Danube River, so Germany um, and into Eastern uh, Europe. We have the Rhine River. We have Spain you know, North Africa, Sicily, I mean, all over Iceland, Greenland, Canada. That's right. The Vikings were in North America. It's amazing. All right. So we see, we looked at this map the other day. We have Charlemagne's empire, and we see where the Vikings had wound up going uh, and conquering and where Muslims had conquered. So when we talked about how there were constant invaders, it was really true. Uh, from every direction, so if we threw in the Magyars, they'd be coming in from this way. Every direction Europe was getting attacked from. Okay, so uh, where did they go? We've talked about this a little bit just in the previous slide. So they went all the way to North America, Canada, uh, New Finland, uh, and they called it Vinland. Um, you know, they have Iceland, Greenland, you know, they get to Estonia in Eastern Europe. We go all the way to the Black Sea and Caspian Sea. Um, they typically went to the British Isles, you know, um, and Northern France. Those are going to be the most common places, but we can see all over the place. They created colonies in Iceland and Greenland. They are going to create a colony in Finland that they will go and abandon, probably because it was so stinking cold and they couldn't grow things. They probably came at a nice, like an unseasonably warm uh, kind of period. And then with the Native Americans there, they said, no, we're, we're out. So what, what did they do? Um, Vikings, they are known for their pillaging, their raiding, their attacking. They loved to attack and loot and then leave. Um, so for most of the Viking Age, that's what they did. Uh, monasteries and weekly defense towns are going to be their favorite uh, places to attack because there's less, less risk and more reward. Um, but also you have to realize that uh, the Norse, they were merchants. They were traders. They are going to go and do a lot of trade with Russia. They said they're going to go all the way to Constantinople. Actually, in Constantinople, uh, 
these Vikings are going to impress the emperor so much that they're going to be called the Varangian guard and they're going to have these giant axes and it's just going to be totally wild and cool. All right. And as we know, they did exploring. I mean, they discovered the America. They're the first Europeans to discover the Americas. I know we always give it to old Chrissy boy, but Christopher Columbus in 1492 is not the first European. It was Leif Erikson. And they built really awesome ships, which we'll see more later on. Okay, so why did they raid? Well, we have this instance where we have instability in Scandinavia. We have people going and fighting over power. We have a little bit of land. So raiding is seen as a way to go take advantage of how weak Europe is at the time and to become rich. Because if there's too many people uh, competing for farmland, you all can't do it. Um, and the thing is, under... Um, you know, the Franks getting unified, um, you know, you have strong leaders, Charles Martel, Pepin the Short, and then Charlemagne. Uh, more wealth is starting to come. Europe is starting to pick itself up together in some ways, but it's not politically unified for the most part. So there's more wealth, more opportunities to go attack and steal it. So they use two kind of boats mostly, the Nar and the Longship. The Longship uh, we see is going to be, it's very small, it's able to be fast, it's, the cool thing is they're able to go and have it on, you know, the seas, um, and they're able to have it in rivers, uh, and they're going to have a sail and oars, and they're going to be able to go. Um, the NAR is their merchant ship, which would be mostly going um, on trade trips, so like when they're going to Eastern Europe, you know, down the Danube and stuff like that. Uh, the long ship is going to be their main um way to go and they're fast here we see we see the awesome uh intricate inlays this is reconstruction here so we get some pretty cool boats this is a viking funeral of course they put them on them and then push them off to sea and then set it on fire so how do we know about these vikings well uh, we have some Icelandic sagas. They were written after the Viking Age, unfortunately. But it is one of the sources we use to talk about the Vikings. Now, one of the cool things um, with the Viking education, however, is they did use stories to teach. And these stories, they would include the geography, the history, how to navigate. Um, and we would find these things over many of their buildings and put around. And we also have Viking ruins, uh, runes, excuse me. And we see those um, pictured down below. John keeps asking me for different languages and I send him links and then he keeps asking me. So I don't know if he is reading his comments, but now, John, they're right there on the bottom. <laughs> um, and so we've got these runes and uh, that's another way we know about them. But really, primarily, we know about the Vikings from what other people wrote about them. Because like I said, the sagas are written actually after the Viking Age. Um, and so we definitely get a one-sided picture of the Vikings, because typically it's the people that they were killing and massacring um, about them. Although the Vikings were ferocious, so don't, you know, we can't go too easy on them. All right, some Viking deities. Now, you probably have heard of many of these. In fact, I know um, anyone in my Richmond class has, because we spent a nice little bit of time talking about some Viking deities. Now, uh, the cool thing about the Vikings with their religion is they believe in different realms. So, like, we have Earth, but there's different, like, you know, you can't see it. So, you know, you're in Asgard, Nibelheim, all of those things. Um, you're in the realm, and that's what you see. Uh, so the Viking uh, gods, they're from Asgard, the Norse gods. We have Thor, of course, over here, the god of thunder. He is, he is stolen from uh, Norse mythology uh, by the Marvel MCU. So if you think you know the Marvel character, that's not exactly the character um, in Norse mythology. Uh, he's very hot-tempered, uh, but, you know, like a good heart. There, he has this... Um, sled pulled by goats. Uh, the cool thing is uh, that the goats, um, he could slaughter and eat the goat for dinner, but just as long as, um, you know, the bones were intact, the, the, the goats would reanimate in the next day so that he can go ride again. There's this great story of um, Loki, uh, the trickster god, um, 
because he and Thor, like I know, like the MCU makes them pitted against each other, always like mortal enemies. Uh, like Loki and Thor were like great frenemies um, <laughs> in Norse mythology, and they're they're going on a trip to the giants, um, and they're staying at this farmer's house, and uh, Thor has to go to the bathroom, and like he went, he slaughtered his goats, and of course, like Thor eats like a whole goat himself, and then like or like a goat and a half and like then the family and loki is left with the other half of a goat and the kid is amazed by how thor is like eating 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 and eating 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 like tons and tons of food uh, like eating this family out of house and home even though he provided the goats um and then when he goes off to the bathroom loki's like you want to be strong like thor boy you got to eat the bone marrow in there so he breaks the the femur of one of um one of thor's goats and like you know, sucks it down. It's like, mm, that's good. And then, you know, they throw it in the bone pile. And uh, the next day when the goat's reanimated and it's got a broken leg, Thor's like, I am going to murder your entire family. Roar! Um, You know, and then the boy's like, I'm sorry, Loki told me. <laughs> and, um, you know, then the boy is forced to go on this adventure with the giants. Um, I know a while ago in Enrichment, we shared the story about where Thor had to dress up uh as freya in a wedding dress to um pretend like he's gonna marry one of these giants so that he can get his uh hammer molnir majolnir back um or excuse me molnir oh gosh golly <laughs> molnir back um that's a great one as well but many of you are already familiar with it we've got odin sometimes known as woden uh the all father he had an eight-legged horse. He sacrificed his eye to go and be able to see. He's got his ravens um, who can see everything. Um, before a battle, a spear was thrown, uh, dedicating um, the lives lost to Odin um, so that they could fight for him in Valhalla. Um, just a very interesting character. Um, he is going to wind up um, actually having a lot of similarities um to christ and this is one of the problems we have with norse mythology um like i said a lot of these things about the norse were written after the norse um so we don't know if there are so many similarities to christ because there's going to be a part where um he's hung on hydrasil idrasil the the life tree much like christ was uh, hung on the cross uh and sacrifice so we don't know is that something that was always in norse mythology or was that added um you know, afterwards by the monks writing this down because it's um, to show similarities with Christianity. We don't know. Uh, so that's one of the challenges. But uh, Odin is a very fascinating um, character. Loki as well, you know, half giant, half, you know, spirit. He's interesting, very interesting. You know, you got Freya uh, and Frigga. You know, so you have love and fertility. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, I highly recommend getting into Norse mythology. If we were in school together, we would be looking more at Norse mythology. So just another reason to lament our distance uh, from each other. So um, like I said, we have the runes. We see them here. Uh, looks like we've got the world serpent on this one as well. Oh, wait, no, not the world serpent. There are runes inside that. I apologize. Uh, we have lots of chronicles written by European monks. And that's going to be the main um, the main source. We have the runes that they have, which gives us some records. Then the chronicles, which, like I said, they're going to paint, paint the Vikings pretty badly because they murdered a lot of Europeans and particularly attacked the, attacked the church and stole um, the wealth that was in the church. And also, finally, we have the sagas, which I said were after the Viking Age. So things, you know, were written um, back, which we think there are some accuracies. We definitely think some of the things are, um, you know, it's kind of like mythology where it was like history and myth rolled together. Uh, and finally, of course, we have archaeological digs and excavations in which we found a lot of really cool, cool stuff. Anyways, guys, that's um, going to be our lecture on the Vikings. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Um, this is one of really um, my favorite topics um, to get to talk about in school. Like I said, we play the, the one song and I say, all right, is this representative of the Vikings? We look at some of their travels. We'll try to get as much of that in this as possible. 
um, but it's obviously not the same. So please uh, do me a favor, press that like and subscribe button. Have a wonderful day. I miss you guys, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.